Alright, so the next point. The next point in Rand um, is the idea of the title of the chapter is uh, what's it called? Is abstraction from abstraction from abstractions, right? Abstraction from abstractions. What in the world does that mean? Well, I've I've drawn a uh, uh, I've drawn a, a symbol. And since it's so big, I'm not going to, well, maybe I should. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll write it down visually. Um, it, it would help if you print this out as well so that you can see, see it up close. Um, sort of how we get to this idea of an abstraction, of an abstraction from abstractions. Some of the ideas that I'm going to use to describe RAND is not in RAND at all. It's my, the, my sort of linguistic contribution to try and help make sense of what she's saying. She doesn't use these words, but I think using the words that I'm going to use in a minute, and I'll tell you what are my words, will help you um, and help me in teaching teaching you guys about RAN. Um, it'll help you formulate ideas of the concepts that she means. There's a lot that's in it. So I'm going to start uh, with the signifiers, right? We'll start with signifiers. Remember, there are two schools of thought with signifiers, those linguists, those linguists that believe that signifiers are objective realities in the world, those who believe signifiers are not objective realities in the world. For Rand, she's part of the group that believes um, uh, signifiers are physical things in the world. Touch, taste, smell, count, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so let's look at a, a few signifiers, right? We look at the signifier car, train, boat. Motorcycle. Um, what makes the thing a train? And I'm able to recognize that all of these are representative of abstractions. I move from an abstraction to um, um, an abstraction of that abstraction, what I classify as a meta. I move to the level of a meta abstraction. She doesn't use that term, I use that term. And what ends up happening is I form the complex concept. I can form a complex concept. What I do from this is I look at each one of these units and I see that there's certain things that these two units share and there's certain things that these two units don't share. What's not shared between these two units is that a scooter uh, I don't know this off the top of my head. I would imagine that a scooter has two wheels. Vans have four wheels. So I might say that, you know, I don't want to include wheels in my unified abstraction. Right? Um, not only that, but there is this level of what I'm going to call meta. Right? What I'm going to call meta signification. Right? Um, there is, there are those things which are signified. Right? There are those things which are signified, so that the signification is RG. That which is signified is this. Right? All of these things are signified. All of these things are signified. But then there's a meta, and I should have drawn an arrow. I'll probably I'll update it. But then there's a meta signification, and that meta signification would be. V vehicles would be the meta signification. Vehicles would be a meta signification. This is my term, but this is what Rand is saying, right? Vehicles would be a signification of a signification. Or to be more technical, vehicles would be a signification of different um, different things which have been signified, right? Cars as signified. Right, uh, vans, trains, planes, automobiles, all of these things, uh, as, as signified, itself signifies. Right, vehicles has a broader scope of signifiers, and I'll say this again: vehicles has a broader scope of signifiers than any particular signified unit. Right, what in the world does that mean? The unit signified, uh, cars, is smaller than the unit signified vehicles because vehicles includes cars, trains, 
um, boats, motorcycles, and so on, right? There are more signifiers in the in the sort of meta signification um, in the term vehicles than there is in the sort of abstracted unit articulation. Um, that doesn't sound too user friendly. Um, I don't know how else to make it. I can't make it any simpler. Um, the, uh, here, here's the simplest way to think of it. Here's an obvious way to think of it. The idea of vehicles, right, is is larger. The idea of vehicles is a larger class of things than the the class of cars or the class of trains or the class of or the class of uh, you know scooters. All of these classes. Um, are different from one, one another, but they share something in common. That thing might be modes of transportation, for example. Right? So that the reason why I, my, um, meta, the meta-signification of vehicles is a larger, has a larger class of signifiers than the, the signification of boats is because this class of vehicles, this, this um, Signification of vehicles includes many different units, right? It includes, in a, in, in a Iranian sense, it includes many, many different units. Um, and this is what she's attempting to articulate in complex, um, complex concept formation, right? Complex concepts don't simply refer to, and this is clear now, right? Complex concepts don't simply, for Rand, refer to perceptual entities complex concepts refer to subordinate concepts, which in turn refer to um, uh, conceptual, uh, uh, perceptual entities. So let me make this simple by just drawing this very simple, and I might add this to the final document. We have complex concepts, point to concepts, which point to right? complex concepts point to subordinate concepts, which point to perceptual entities. Right? These um, complex concepts are what I call meta uh, right? meta significations. Right? They're significations of significations. The class of meta significations logically must be greater, or the scope of meta-significations must be linguistically greater than, have a greater scope of signifiers than the scope of uh, significations, right? Meta-significations, since they include significations, have to have a broader scope of signifiers than just a signification. And I think that's what she's saying. I think that's what she's saying. Um, I'm open to debate on this point. Maybe I've read too much into her, but I think that's what she's saying. Um, so I would suggest that uh, you guys read chapter three, uh, the first page and a half. Let me know if you think I, uh, I explained it right. Um, with that being said, that, that uh, ends my analysis of Rand's first, the, the beginning part of uh, chapter three. Um, as I said, chapter three is very, very deep, very, very complex. Um, I hope this made it a little more user-friendly. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell. Goodbye.